Alright guys, so um, I've done a lot of truck driving in the last few years, but um, how did it all start? Well, it's all started after I didn't get hired at a company which was started by a professor who was running some formal systems uh, stuff at University of Illinois. And I'm going to explain why their thinking doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to kind of point out some key aspects. So there's a quote, and I don't remember the quote exactly, but it's, it, everything depends on the unreasonable man. So one of the professors was in a chat with me, with the professor who started this company, and... This professor was asking me, why am I not making some other guy in the company happy? See, they had asked me, this guy had asked me, make an interface for something. So I, I walked up to him and I determined in my mind, I was like, you know, something doesn't add up because if I make an interface, because I was trying to think, what's the optimal interface to make? And then I thought about it and I was like, well, we're making scripts that compiles code and then and we're taking the scripts from the readme to compile the code to then compile it in our operating system. I was like, so the best interface for this would be not to have an interface essentially at all because all the options are defined by an actual script which is defined to be text. So I was kind of confused because I was like, we don't want to alter the readme. So the best interface to have would be to have no interface at all. So like the set of all possible interfaces, the best option would be to not, would be the empty set. Like would be not to have an interface. So I, you know, I asked him like, what do you want me to do? And you know, he, for some reason he didn't answer me. And then uh, I had like these two other professors who were giving recommendations to this professor who was running this company. And I think they were acting like he was trying to start, like he would, thought he was going to start some big company. Um, and the whole reason why I was at this company in the first place is because I not only figured out that you had to formalize code, but I also figured out like six other core fundamental things. And it seemed like this professor had only figured out one of these seven fundamental ideas. It, it kind of reminds me of like Bitcoin where nobody understands Craig Wright and they don't understand how to scale Bitcoin because they only understood one aspect of it, not like all the like 10 core fundamental aspects. So that's why BSV is like literally like 2 million times less expensive than BTC to do a transaction. That's like going to the gas station and spending $125,000 instead of 25 cents on a transaction. So... Um, anyway, I had figured out how to get rid of programming language all, all together. Like, literally, you do not need programming languages for anything. Not from assembly language all the way up to Haskell. You don't need C. You don't need C++. You don't need any of them. And I was going to formally prove it, like, in a PhD. Uh, like, showing with math that literally, like, with math, that you don't need the programming languages. Because literally every possible thing that you could possibly do... 100% of all possible things you could do, you could do in a system that I um, had already come up with and a lot more because it was generalized. But uh, that didn't matter because literally no one at the company ever asked me one time like anything about this. Like they didn't care at all. There was one Chinese guy who had lunch with me. And that was about it. No one else even wanted to have lunch with me. I think they didn't think that math... You, they, they thought that you have to have a degree or something, or you have to have some social standing in order for your math to be correct, not for math itself to, to be correct, if that makes sense, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how they thought that because they're like literally... Like they had a logic system called matching logic. And they, they're in all this research, all this money, by the way, tax money, because it's a, it's a public, publicly funded university. That's why I have to talk about this, because I'm explaining to you why your tax money is corrupted by University of Illinois, 
because they won't listen to someone like me who's willing to go out there, literally do the correct thing and get judged for it just because I'm doing the correct thing because I'm not fudging anything. So just by being smart, they're not going to listen to me and they're going to do and that's this is why I know about like Craig Wright for example with Bitcoin is because it's the same thing they hate him even though all he did was literally the right thing and that's it like just like because they're not willing to study and he is the two paths diverge and then when they converge in the future they're like oh you know this guy's so different he must be a bad guy and we shouldn't trust him because he's so different from us even though we're like you know we cheat and we we don't actually study as hard as him so we don't actually understand everything he's saying so he must be lying because if he wasn't lying he would have you know proven these things that in our minds are really simple but actually in reality you can show using math that they're more complicated so um anyway um university of illinois is basically being corrupt with how you're using how your money's used because they're supporting this professor and they're also he also has these other professors who are saying these quotes to him like oh you know you have to be an unreasonable man which is funny because i was asking like in the chat like why it's like they were trying to get like have an accountability guy there just to watch to see me like somehow i'm not listening to doing everything i'm told by the way i, I like to do literally everything that i'm told to do as long as it's mathematically possible but when somebody comes up to you and they're like you you're not working hard enough and unless you find the positive integer which is less than three but also greater than six you better find it otherwise you're not doing your homework it's like so it's impossible oh nothing's impossible you're complaining that it's too hard you're not hard enough worker no, that's actually how math works, is there's things that are literally mathematically impossible, and if you don't say that they're impossible, then you're lying. So, <laughs> or you're just wrong. Um, so, anyway, um, I had done all this research as a student at University of Illinois. Nobody was really paying me. Um, I eventually had to just drive trucks to pay my student loans back but when i was there i figured out how to construct the entire type structure for for programming languages like haskell and things like that in order to understand how to deal with this stuff and when i was at this company i explicitly told them i was just like you know i think we can meet create a new operating system using calculus of inductive constructions why well because it's an abstraction on lambda calculus that applies types which means that you can basically create all your logic basically all the logic that you use for proofs for programming languages all these things you can construct it using um, using the system where you can actually prove what the types are in such a way that you don't have these things like undefined behavior and things like that so we're working in this company and um, they're, they're literally like finding undefined behavior for the programming language C. And it's like, where is this? Where, wh why would you do this when I already figured out how to make a, basically how to make, like I already made an app that lets you code just using menus. And I literally released it, not for Linux, but for the iPhone and it works and you can actually edit uh, code, you can edit a program using just menus. So I did all this and this was what I did years before I even worked at this company, like four years before I worked at this company. So that's how I got hired there was I actually showed this to the professor. So he should have known when he hired me like, oh, Tim figured out how to create a, um, basically a programming environment where you don't need to compile anything and where there's no such thing as a syntax error and where there's essentially you can construct things in such a way that you can make sure that there's no such thing as undefined behavior because you can limit the strut you can limit 
the rules for, of construction to synthesize programs that only are defined in a, in a way that's valid according to your type rules, according to your behavior rules. So um, all you have to do is show that you can construct all the C programs with that and you in in using their logic system you could do that so i had all this information available and i wasn't even working on it i kept asking and he would answer in the chat he, this professor who started this company he would answer no in all capital letters i don't know why in all capital letters like i don't get why would you say no in all capital letters like are you yelling at me no like i shouldn't be working on that because i'm literally asking this question to, um, <laughs> to, I'm asking this question because it's the best possible path that this company can take. You know, it's like this is the step forward into the future. So apparently the answer was no, but there's no explanation why. So that's funny because he acted like I needed accountability when I was accountable, when I literally would like, when I worked, I would keep track of it every second of what I was working on, there was a log of what I was doing. And uh, on top of that, I was also working on things that I already told them from the beginning. I don't like to write scripts. Well, I did that anyway, and I even invented an entire new scripting system. <laughs> Guess what? It also uses SHA-256, just like Bitcoin, uses SHA-256 hashing to check whether or not these scripts changed or whether or not you downloaded something already or whether or not um, you compiled something already. And it, that way you wouldn't have to redo work. So if you ran 100,000 tests, you would only redo you know, 20 of them that changed, but not the rest of them. So it made things way more efficient. And I found out years later that there were companies that were building like the entire business models on top of like this same type of idea so i was like wow that's funny because when they looked at my scripts they would they would just ask what is this the s word this the the professor from university of illinois who started this company he would say what is this and then he would say the s word and he never even really seemed to understand how it worked and then he would be mad because he thought that the scripts themselves were not formally constructed or defined. And I'm like, well, the whole point of these is to help your logic system grow so that we can create that type of thing. Like that's, the, I'm literally doing what you're telling me to do, like not what I want to do on my own, which is to have these scripts that test your software. Um, so, so that, it was funny because that quote when they, when they were in the chat with me, I didn't realize that they were saying, oh, you have to be the unreasonable man. I didn't know they were talking about, I didn't know this professor was referring to the other professor. I thought he was referring to me being an unreasonable guy somehow just because, you know, I'm just answering them logically. And because the progress depends on me because I had, you know, I was so motivated and figuring all these things out and doing all this research on my own. Well, I think they were actually just oblivious. They didn't know that I researched on my own. I think they just assumed that I was lazy or that I didn't know, I didn't care. So I don't know what they thought my intentions were coming at this company in the first place. Um, I think they were too scared to tell me, hey, I think that your intentions are just to be lazy and, and, and ask me, is it true? Because then I'd be like, no, you know, my intentions are to actually, you know, do this research, you know, or they could have asked me like, is this uh, calculus and Dex's constructions thing that I don't understand? Is this legitimate or are you just making it up? You know, they could have asked me that and I could have been like, oh, it's legitimate. Do you want me to explain it to you? Or... You know, I think you keep asking, why do you want to work on these other things? But they don't ask me these things. And they don't ask, they, they didn't pay attention to the fact that these error messages that came up in the scripts had nothing to do with anything that I had programmed. It had everything to do with literally them telling me, you have to use this, you know, use this uh, testing suite for, that's designed for Java, which prints out error messages. Use that to test um, our C programs, you know, 
So um, they are very stagnant. I remember sitting down at you know with this professor, and he said something like, "Oh, we only we only hire the best." Remember, it's like well. I, I don't understand how that's the best. I don't understand how people at that this company that don't seem to understand, like they're not experts in calculus of inductive constructions, so which is like necessary for good type theory research. If you want to understand how to formally synthesize and formally verify semantics for a programming language, you should you should be a pro at that yeah you, you should understand the things that i had figured out on my own which was that you don't need a first stage compiler you don't need compilers because everything you can do with a compiled program you can do by constructing a parse tree which means you don't need a compiler to do anything that the compiler can produce so you don't need you basically don't need compilers because you don't need the parsers um and I wouldn't necessarily call it a compiler. You could, but just the, the part that converts it to assembly code, um, I suppose you could still argue that you might still use that, but you can still generate that using functions and you can start using hardware that is able to just, I mean, you can start running dynamic code which produces, um, that produces assembly code um, as an output of a function, which means you don't need a compiler anymore because you don't need to treat an entire set of, uh, an entire expression system separately um, as data from another uh, expression system. You, all the math can be composed together and it and you're using calculus of inductive constructions. You're using types to define what is a higher level statement, what is assembly statement. I mean, the, these people don't understand this, but they're treating me, who's just writing these scripts, like I'm somehow wasting their time or something. It's like, it, it makes me wonder, it's like, do they do they go and spy on, like, instead of confronting me and be like, hey, we're, we saw that you were on YouTube. It's like, did, did they even think to ask, like, oh, maybe he was just listening to music the entire time, classical music, while he's coding. Hmm. Oh, but that's not something they would do. That's something that I would do because I like to do what I've learned since I was young, which is be a leader, be intelligent. Um, give people the benefit of the doubt, and then if you think somebody's doing something wrong, find out and actually prove it and confront them and take what they have to say as part of the record so that you can see whether or not they're actually lying or not. Unlike what they did in the high court with uh, Craig Wright, by the way, because he answered like every single little tiny question that was presented to him, and he, he, he explained everything and uh, they still didn't under they don't even understand uh, the difference between the types of Merkle trees that you have to use to verify transactions. Um, so it's just hilarious because I don't know how much more efficient that BSV has to be than BTC for people to realize like, oh yeah, BTC is the scam, and uh, Blockstream with Adam Back and Nick Zabo and uh, and Ethereum. With Vitalik, they're actually the scammers and they're actually the liars. Why? Because they're the ones trying to keep the blocks small so that they can make their own privately owned, centrally controlled networks that everyone has to go through to you know, access their financial information instead of a big block where everyone can access it permissionless. You know, When are they going to find out that that's the real scammer group right there? That's the cartel. So, um, I don't know. So some people just, they don't want to use their morals because let's say my professor, Eddie Brennan at this company did not understand what I was working on. Let's just assume that, okay? They're not smart enough. They think, but maybe they think I'm dumb. Maybe they think I'm not doing my work. Um, why don't they just, why don't, why don't they at least have my same level of moral standards where I'm willing to talk about something and prove something and find out the truth, but they're not 
They're like, oh no, he's 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 not good enough to work here. We need someone with 20 years of experience. Really? That's how you define how good somebody is at being a tester? It, it, it's whether they have 20 years of experience? Really? It's, it's 2024, and I'm still saying the exact same thing I was saying back in 2018 when this company didn't want to hire me full-time. I haven't changed my opinion at all. Like Literally, my view on it has not changed at all since for the past six years so how can you explain to me like how how is can i have 20 years of experience trying to tell you that you're wrong about the 20 years of experience does that make sense because that's 20 years of experience i mean does that make does that work but they don't want to listen so i think it this is just how this is just how people are they want to run companies and they don't know what they're doing, and then they just they, then they don't want to be a leader. And a leader is someone who you can have ten thousand people come up to you and say, "Oh, we need to get rid of Tim," and zero people come up to you and say, "Oh, no, Tim's smart. We need to keep him." And you're still, if you're a leader, it doesn't matter what the number is because you'll still go up to Tim and you'll ask him and be like, "Are these things true?" Because maybe, just maybe he can prove all 10,000 of those people wrong. And that's where you'll make a lot of money. <laughs> but obviously they don't want money because they just want to do things that are self-contradictory. Because if they wanted money, they would have taken my idea. They would have been like, oh, cool. We don't even need C as a programming language anymore. We can like literally create programs more efficiently than a C programmer could possibly do it on his own. So... You know, uh, don't give your don't vote to give money to these universities anymore because these universities are scams. I went to University of Illinois. I did my best. I was the best student I could. I enjoyed my time there, but ultimately, um, it's a scam because uh, unless unless these universities are saying, oh. Nope, Craig Wright is Satoshi. Uh, BSV is actually a t two million times more efficient, and it, we only used basic logic to figure that out, but we're actually willing to admit that that's the truth. Unless they can actually come out and say that, you know, don't trust them with your money because it's the same thing with the hospitals and trying to force you into getting whatever treatment that they want to give you regardless of whether it makes them money or not. They won't listen to you. So that's that's corruption versus not corruption. It, anytime something's funded by the government, read Ayn Rand's books. I don't really read her books, but I just kind of understand the concept, I think. But in my view, uh, something that's not state-funded or government-funded tends to be five times more efficient economically than something that is state or government-funded. So because these people were so, they thought they were working in a company or corporate minded, but they're actually really like socialist the way they think because they get their money. They were trying to get money from like government deals and from NASA and from, you know, the university and from ling, 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 ling. it's like, can you possibly just get money without using the government's help? Maybe that's. Maybe that's a test. Maybe that maybe you're actually like using and abusing and cheating people who are much smarter than you and you're not even taking advantage of them because if they like literally I could have worked for them for free and they rejected it. Literally I could have paid them $100 per hour for me to work for them and they didn't even give me that option either. They didn't let me train the next person. They didn't let me do anything. So um Whew. The only thing I got was some email and it was creepy because like the GitHub support ticket was like number 666 and I was like, what am I supposed to do? Respond to the... <laughs> this creeped me out. And it was some uh, Chinese guy that they had hired to do the testing. It's just like, well, why are you t hiring more and more different people? Why not... Why not let me go do what I was doing because it was actually working 
and I was always providing the company with more to fix than they could even handle. So I was always on top of my game doing what I wasn't even good at, which was writing scripts, which I never even claimed to be good at. So, um, yeah, University of Illinois, man, they're just, their computer science department is, is turning out to be a scam. And I'm saying this, like, after years. Like, I, was, I went to University of Illinois at Chicago in 2007 and then 2008. And then I went back to University of Illinois in Champaign in 2012. So this is 12 years after that. This is, this is going on, it's going to be going on 20 years, but I've seen, I'm seeing this decay because the, the professor, if the professor goes from a professor who will admit that he's wrong, like he did in a University of Illinois in Chicago in 2008, where he admitted that he was wrong, to a professor that won't, who, who always get, actually tells people, you have to admit that you're wrong. You have to admit, including his wife, on Christmas, she was like, oh, I thought no one was going to work here, but you're working here. Oh, I was wrong. He would get on people's cases and message it in the chat. If you're new here, you better admit that you're wrong. But he's himself is not a guy. He's a Romanian guy, I think, but he wouldn't admit that he's wrong. So it's like, why are we moving away from being correct to being like this fake in like why are we supporting this uh there you know we should take away university of illinois computer science funding unless they actually admit that they're wrong and they come back to me and they say publicly in front of the world we messed up tim was right he did all this research on his own as a student nobody paid him he owns all the research he figured out how to get rid of programming languages once and for all. We do not need them. He formally showed that we do not need them. And we rejected him and we didn't listen to him. We forced him to be homeless in our own city where the university is. We forced him to go out and drive trucks. We forced his parents to reject him because he didn't want to come back to this company. Because I didn't, I, I, I told this company after three months, they were like, well, you know, we're kind of on the fence we'll give you another internship. And I told my parents, I'm like, I don't want to go back to them because they don't understand. They're not going to hire me full time after the work I did for them. Oh, forgive him. What? Forgive. Forgive? What do you mean forgive? Like, I, okay, I forgive you. Now I'm going to come back and you're still going to not understand what I'm doing. That's, there has nothing to do with forgiveness. It has to do with Either they understand it or they don't. They, either they're willing to admit that they're wrong or they're going to think forever that they admit that they're wrong, but they don't. So, yeah, University of Illinois Computer Science, um, if they produce this type of trash, these type of trash professors um, that don't actually, that they're just socialist-minded because they just think they're smart and they're just retarded. That's the truth. So... Um, University of Illinois Computer Science is just full of retards. And they think that I'm a retard. That's the awesome part is that I get BSV, I get, you know, and Craig Wright, it's the same thing. Everyone thinks that he's a dumb butt. He, everything, everyone thinks that he's a retard. And yet now BSV is going to take over and screw you, Ethereum, screw you, BTC, you know, screw you, Cardano and Charles Hoskinson. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all chose to call him a retard when he was kind enough to explain. It's Turing complete. Uh, you can have large blocks because you can check the Merkel pads up. By the way, Turing completeness, I learned that at University of Illinois. Why? Because it's not all trash. Okay, I'm calling them all retards. I, I hope poor... I want to say... I, I don't want to say names, but the, the, the short... Poor, older computer science professor lady. Very nice lady, very smart. I learned from her. I learned from a couple people there. And you can replace a while loop with a while, the same copy of the while loop, which you don't have to copy, by the way. But you can replace it and then embed it inside of an if statement. And there you go. What is that? That's an expression that you just updated from one expression to another expression. So what is that? That's data. What's data? Something that you can put on a transaction. What's a transaction? Oh, an iteration in the blockchain. 
oh, wait a minute, so that means it's Turing complete because you can do loops because you can publish whatever info data you want. Guys, you don't need gas fees. You don't need Ethereum. Just listen to, just why don't people listen to Craig? Why do they have to be like Vitalik and be like, oh, get him off the stage. Why do we allow these uh, frauds up here on the stage? Hello, you're censoring him. Craig Wright was literally explaining how you want a heavily connected network, not a network where everyone, everyone little farmer is trying to run an entire node on his little farm. That's just stupid. No, he runs a wallet. A wallet can check any pair of transactions because there's a Merkle path. The nodes should grow to be large. Why do people not get this? I don't know, but I didn't find out about it until this last year. But I knew about this programming stuff for like, I don't know. I've just been studying programming languages since before 2012. I mean, I was already coming up with my idea for the parse tree editor before then. So why, why, why are people not gonna use logic? Why would you hire someone? What I don't get is why do, why do people hire someone who's supposed to be a programmer which by the Curry-Howard isomorphism is also a logician, when you're gonna decide not to listen to their logic or let them use logic in the first place. That doesn't make any sense. That's, a, that's so, especially if it's abstract logic. Like, I'm not a calculator. I'm actually figuring out the research, how to improve the actual logic system. So I'm not just being a calculator. I'm actually being a logician. It's really dumb. It's really stupid. And y'all can be like, wow, did you just think of that now? Wow, you're just ranting now? No, this is what I've been thinking since like 2018. This, the same thing has been on my mind because it's like what Jordan Peterson say like you have to express something so whatever I need to express not enough people are listening to it yet that's why I have to explain it on a video so that more people actually listen and start catching on and realizing like oh we as a society have messed up we as humanity have messed up we need to actually change the way we think and start listening to people like this guy who actually does know what he's talking about even though we thought that he didn't know what he was talking about that's why i have to make a video like this all right peace out guys